This question is from May, June 2015, paper 12, question 32. When a thin metal wire is stretched, it becomes longer and thinner. This causes a change in the resistance of the wire. The volume of the wire remains constant. Which graph could represent the variation with extension X of the resistance R of the wire? This is a diagram to represent the metal wire with a initial resistance R with the length and cross-sectional area. Now, this wire is being stretched and the question is asking to find a graph that represents the variation of this extension of the resistance of the wire. This L represents the X from this graph. The problem is stated the volume is the same. So the volume of a cylindrical shape is the area, cross-sectional area, times the height, in this case, the length. Two variables are changing at the same time, the length and the cross-sectional area. All graphs for this option shows resistance versus length. So find the relationship between resistance and length that express the changing of area and keeping volume the same. I can start with this formula for resistance, which is equal to the product of resistivity with length over cross-sectional area and rearrange the volume um, in terms of area and make our substitution here. So which means that volume is equal to the area times the length. So in terms of area, it will be volume over length. So here area is volume over length. So to rearrange this, so my R is, I keep the numerator and I flip the denominator. And I'm going to rearrange this. So rho over V times L times L is L square. In this case, we have the same material because is the conductor and the same one that being stretched. So the material is the same and the volume remains constant, which is the same. So these two terms, resistivity and volume, is constant. Now in this step, I'm going to isolate the section of this formula that remains constant with the section that is changing. So I'm going to take this away and state that the resistance is directly proportional to the square of the length. So, making an analogy with a um, equation, so my uh, R is my Y, and the square length is the X square. So this is a quadratic function. The shape of the graph should be a quadratic function. So here we have a cup of that we can eliminate. So B is not a quadratic function and C is not a quadratic function. The question is, which one will be the right answer, A or D? So before you lean towards D, take in consideration that the wire has an initial resistance before stretching. So if you look at this graph, this graph express exactly what's going on here. We have an initial resistance before the line, the graph behaves like a quadratic equation. 
but because there is an initial resistance before stretching, the graph from option A is the correct one. Question from October, November 2012, paper 12, question 34. The graph shows the variation with length of resistance R of two wires, X and Y, made from the same material. So you have two lines here, and there are four options that you need to analyze one by one to find the correct answer. A good strategy is to find a slope or gradient for each line X and Y before go over the answers. Both lines um, pass through the origin, so I can say the function uh, could be written this in this format, y is equal mx. So this m, m here is the gradient. Or the how the steep is the line. To calculate the gradient for the line x, which is m, x is the gradient. I'm using here, um, because pass for the origin, just I can state that it will be 20 over 0 0.6. 20 ohms over 0 0.6 meter. Likewise, the gradient for the line Y, um, I can select the this point right here, which is 10 over 0 0.6, which means the gradient Mx for the graph X is 33.33 .33 ohms per meter, and for the line Y is 16.16 .16 ohms per meter. So here I have the slope for X and Y, and ohms per meter is the same as R over L for the graph X and this is R over L for the graph, graph Y. Checking option A. The cross-sectional area of X is two times the cross-sectional area of Y. So option A states that the cross-sectional area X is two times the cross-sectional area Y. To check this statement, I'm going to write the equation for resistance in terms of the length and cross-sectional area of a wire. So since we have here the same, same material, the problem states same material, that means same resistivity. I'm going to rearrange this equation in terms of resistivity. So, rho is Ra over L. Because the resistivity for X and Y is the same, so I can state that the resistivity of X is equal to resistivity of Y. So, after my substitution, all this section, all this first term is related to um, graph X and this one, graph Y. So, resistance over length for X, I have right here, which is my gradient. And resistance over L for Y, I have as my gradient. So in this step, the R over L is 33.33 AX, and R over L for Y is 16.66 AY. So I want to isolate this, so I divide both terms by 33.33. .33. So to finalize this, so we see here that this is half, so which means that 
this statement is not true because the development of these, these steps ends at the cross-sectional area for the wire X actually is half of the cross-sectional cross -sectional area of uh, line Y, wire, wire, Y, um, not a double. So this is not correct. False statement. Option B, it states that the resistivity of the wire X is two times the resistivity of wire Y, which is false because both iris are made of from the same material. So the resistivity of X actually is equal to the resistivity of Y. Now let's check option C. When equal lengths of X and Y are connected in series to a battery, power in X is two times the power in Y. To answer the option C, I'm going to replace the resistance of the wire X with this box right here and the resistance of the wire Y with this box right here and put this then together as um, a series circuit, connect to a battery. From option A, we conclude that the cross-sectional area for the wire X is half of the cross-sectional area of the wire Y. Now, what happened here is, if that's true, which it, which it is, so the cross-sectional area of wire Y is actually two times larger, wider, than the cross-sectional area of the wire X. These pictures illustrate just that. Now we know the resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So if that's the ratio, this is two times larger than this. So means that the resistance in this wire is two times larger than the resistance of this wire, which means Narrow is the tunnel, so more resistance for pass through. This one is a wider tunnel, so less resistance. Now again, this box represents the resistance of the wire X, and this the resistance of the wire Y. And on option C is talking about those two wires being connected in series to a battery. So now I'm going to replace the value of the resistance um, that based on the ratio with the cross-sectional area of those wires. So my X is to R and my Y is R. Because those wires are in series, so there is a current flow in the circuit so the same current is flowing through those two wires is the same. To find the power in terms of the resistance, I'm using this formula here. Power is equal to the current square times R. Now I'm going to calculate the ratio. So here indicates I square R for X, and this is I square R for Y. So to find the ratio between the wire, the power on wire X with the power on the wire Y, I'm going to do my substitution using P is equal I square R. So because the, the current is the same, so I'm going to cancel those currents. My RX is two R and my RY is just R. So I can cancel out and what is left is two. So the power on the wire X is equal to two times the power on wire Y. So option C statement is correct.
I want you to take a look on option D, even though I know that probably the correct answer is this one. So here it states that when equal lengths of X and Y are connected in parallel to a battery, the current in X is two times the current in Y. So here is my connection in series. So I have those two wires connecting series. And I know that for the wire X, the value is 2R in terms of ratio, and for Y is just R. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time in parallel. So now in parallel, the voltage across the wire Y and the voltage across the wire X is the same. So the statement says the current on X is equal to times on current of current on Y. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to use this formula for Ohm's law, I is equal V over R. And now I'm going to find the relationship between IX over IY. So this is V over R over RX actually and V over RY. So because V is the same because the circuit in series, then I can kind of factor it a, a little bit. So I have, this is my numerator, this go cancel out. And my denominator now is flipping this is RY. So my IX over IY is my RY is uh, just R. And my Rx is 2 times R. So cancel this. So this means that Ix is over Iy is 1 over 2. So my Ix is equal to my Ix is half of my Iy. So the option gave you this statement and we verified this is false because actually the current on X is half of the current on Y. So the answer for this question is option C. So in this question, I work option by option. And uh, the key element of this question is to find the gradient and understand that the gradient is um, the ratio be between the resistance over length. So that was very helpful to find the relationship between the area um, of the two wires and from there to find the relationship between the resistance of each wire. So because they, we have a ratio here of the cross-sectional area on Y, that's two times the cross-sectional area on X. So I could kind of maneuver with a lot of information here and uh, figure out that the wire X has the resistance of wire X is two times the resistance of wire Y. So, and then we calculate the power, the one asking for the power, the relationship between the power between both wires. The second one is the relationship between the current between both wires. Question from May, June 2018, paper 13, question 30. A slice of germanium of cross-sectional area one square centimeter carries a current of 56 microamps. The number density of charge carries in the germanium, germanium is two times 10 to the 13 per cubic centimeter. Each charge carrier has a charge equal to the charge of an electron. What is the average drift velocity of the charge carriers in the germanium? I organize all the information given this problem in this data table. Then I look at my answers. I have meters per second on all options. 
which means that I have to change my square centimeter to square meter. Microamps, I have to use the multiplier relate to micro. The volume here, cubic centimeter, I have to change it to cubic meter. And this looks okay. So let me start with square centimeters. So a centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meter. Everything here is a square. Therefore, the result is 1 times 10, 2 times 2, 4, negative, and meter is square, so meter is square. Done. 56 microamps, that's the easy one. So 56 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. This one, I need to convert the denominator, so I keep the numerator the same. And the denominator is, okay, centimeter is 1 times 10 to the minus 2, a meter, right, cube. Okay, so the denominator needs some work, so is uh, centimeter to meter is 10 to the minus 2, 1 times 10 to the minus 2, which is the same thing, or just 10 to the minus 2, meter, cube. So, and then, on the denominator is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 um, cubic meter. 2 EE, 213, uh, divided by 1 EE, negative 6, is 2 times 10 to the 19. Okay, so now we have everything in the metric system. So now I can use my formula for drift velocity and calculate the value. I usually write the, the formula for current in terms of drift velocity, which is NAVI um, as an acronym. So my velocity here is the current over NAE. Now I'm going to substitute everything here that from my table. From my table, my current is 56 times 10 to the negative 6. My N is 2 times 10 to the 19. My A is 1 times 10 to the negative 4. And the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. In the calculator, 56 EE negative 6 is equal Divide by, I'm going to open parentheses and write all this, 2 EE negative 19 times 1 EE negative 4 times 1.6 EE negative 19, close, boom. So this is my final answer. However, I don't have this as an option, but I have 0.18. So, I can select this answer here that is closer to my value. Question from May, June 2018, paper 11, question 30. The current I in a metal wire is given by the expression shown here. I is equal A N V Q. What does the symbol N represent? N is given by this formula. NE, which is the number of free electrons over volume. So the correct answer is C, the number of free electrons per unit of volume. Question from October, November 2011, uh, paper 14, question 34 and 35. So let me work first on question 34. The graph shows an electric current I through a conducting liquid varies with the potential difference V across it. At which point of the graph does the liquid have the smallest resistance? In this graph here, like a side note of current over voltage showing a straight line, means that this resistance is constant. 
but in this graph of current over time is showing that the resistance is changing um, on different sections. So the question is, which section represents, which point of this graph actually represents the lowest resistance? One simple way to answer this problem is um, give you some numerical values for the voltage and current and, uh, and calculate the resistance on each point. So if I say from here to here, I have like 10 volts. So C is about halfway. So this will be five volts. And A is kind of halfway. So that will be like 2.5 volts. And C is right between those two values. So I can say this is 3.75 volts. Now let me try to do the same thing for the Y. So if I say this here is 10 amps, so I can say that my B is kind of halfway, so that will be five amps. And my A is not quite, um, and my C, let's see where, if I can find a number here. So if this is kind of 2.5, I can say this is kind of 1.5 amps. And if this here is 7.5, I can say this is kind of 8 amps. Okay, so I know that resistance is V over I. So I have values, numerical values for V and numerical values for I. And I'm going to calculate with the average values that I place in this graph. So for the point D on this graph will be um, voltage is 10, current is 10, 10 divided by 10 is 1 ohm. C is V is 5 divided by 8, which is the current is 0 0.625 ohms. For B is 3.75 divided by 5 is 0 0.75 ohms. And for A is 2.5 divided by 1.5 is 1.67 amps. So when I comp sorry ohms. So when I compare, um, D is one ohm, C is 0 0.625 ohm, C is 0 0.75 ohms, and A is 1.67 ohms. So my the smallest, the smallest resistance is on C. So the answer is C. Question 35 from the same test. The combined resistance RT of two resistors of resistances R1 and R2 connecting parallel is given by this formula. Which statement is used in the derivation of this formula? So this circuit is showing R1 and R2 connected in parallel, which means that the voltage across each resistor is the same and the current uh, flowing in this joint is equal IT is equal I1 plus I2. The first statement says that the current through the two resistors are equal. So this is not how we derive this formula is not through this equation. So the answer here is no. B, the potential difference across each resistor is the same. It's true. The uh, potential difference on V1 is equal to V2. Option C, the supply current is split between the two resistors, which is correct. So here is, there are two, two statements in option C. Here is IT is equal I1 plus I2, which is correct. The supply current is split between the two resistors in the same ratio as the ratio of the resistances. 
I would be careful with option C, looks very promising, but the problem here is that it says they split at the same ratio as the ratio of the resistances. No, because the current is inversely proportional to resistance, which means greater the resistance, is smaller the current. So it's not the same ratio, it's the uh, inversely proportional. Option D, the power dissipated is the sum of the power dissipated in the two resistors separately. These will be true for series circuit, but not for parallel. Okay, so option B is the correct one, but how we can derive a formula um, on this circuit with this statement to lead to this formula? I'm going to squeeze a little bit here this information. So IT, the current that enter this joint is equal to the sum to the current that are leaving uh, the currents leaving in the joint. Okay, I'm going to try to squeeze a little bit this information. Hope it not be a little bit confusing. Um, so the sum of the currents in is equal to the sum of the currents out uh, in a joint. So here is the statement, number one. Number two, the voltage across each resistor is the same, so I know the current here will be V over RT, and this will be V over R1 plus V over R2. Now, because the voltage is the same, so we can cancel all the voltages, and that is going to lead to this equation right here. 1, the inverse of the total resistance is equal to the sum of the inverse of individual resistance. So definitely option B is the correct one. The last one for this page, six resistors each of resistance R are connected as shown and the combined resistance is 66 kilo ohms. What is the value of this resistor? All these resistors, they are the same. We have three resistors in parallel, in series with two resistors in parallel, in series with one resistor. So I'm going to be working separately here. So those, if those three resistors are identical, I can say the combination of these, the total resistance for this branch should be R over three. This one will be R over 2, and this is R. Now I have R plus R over 2 plus R over 3, which means that RT is equal R plus R over 2 plus R over 3. A common multiplier here is 6. So 6 divided by 1 is 6 times R, 6R plus 6 divided by 2 is 3, times R is 3R, plus 6 divided by 3 is 2, times 2R is like this, all right? So, RT is equal to, so when I add all these numerator, 6 plus 3 plus 2 is 11R over 6, I want to isolate my R here, so that will be 6RT over 11, RT is 66 kilo ohms, so uh, because all the answers are in kilos, so I just need to use 66 here. So 6 times 66 equal divided by 11 is 36 kilo ohms. So answer is D. So here on this page, I answer two questions from the same test, and I answer this question right here. Another one with um, network of resistors from May, June 13, paper 12, question 37. Five resistors are connected as shown. 
I have two here in series, two is series, and all, the, all of them combined in parallel. What is the total resistance between P and Q? So 20 plus eight, 28. A six plus eight is 14, and here we have seven. So I have those three resistors in parallel. Okay, so um, using your calculator here, so it's 28 inverse plus 14 inverse plus seven inverse equal inverse, four ohms. Answer C. Question from May, June 2015, paper 13, question 37. The diagram shows parts of a current carrying circuit. The end meter, this one, has negligible resistance. Uh, what is the reading of the end meter? So here we have five amps going to this joint and leaving this joint. So the total current here is five amps. I need to find the total voltage. So the first step is to find the total resistance which is the inverse of this, plus the inverse of two, plus the inverse of five, inverse one more time. So I have 0 0.588 ohms. Then to find the total voltage, which is the same across each resistor, is the total resistance times the total current in the circuit, which is five. So my Total voltage is 2.94 volts. Finally, since the voltage is the same, so the voltage across this resistor here is 2.94. To find the current flowing here is uh, the voltage over the resistance. So the current flowing through this branch right here is 1.47, which is the current that is flowing through this N meter. So the closest answer is 1.5 amps.